Hi, great eight. It's me, your teacher. So I haven't uploaded in a while because obviously lockdown, well, lockdown was uh, de-escalated. And also we came back to school with the grade 12. So I've been very busy with that. But I got a request to upload the next video. So that's what I'm going to do. So the last time I saw you, we spoke about things like why is gold valuable and you had activity six which was analyzing a cartoon i'm just going to quickly go through the answers of activity six before we move on to the next part which is conditions underground so this would have been your answer to activity six gold is deep underground so they needed machines to sink the shafts these machines were expensive there were poisonous gases that needed to be removed from the mine so that the miners could breathe they needed special pumps to remove water from the mines the rock had very little gold in it. A large amount of rock had to be dug out to get it. Skilled workers needed to be paid to work the machines and manage the workers. They also had to pay unskilled workers. They had to pay the bank back for the loan taken to start the mine and had to pay tax to the government. The price of gold was fixed so they couldn't put the price up to make more money and to make a profit the mine owners had to get a very large supply of cheap unskilled labor. So now we can move on to the next unit, which is conditions underground. It's very, very short. Miners faced many dangers when working underground, such as rock falls from the roof or the upper levels of the mine, accidents with dynamite, health problems caused by rock dust sitting on the lungs, example, TB, pneumonia, and silicosis, which is basically when you get um, damage to your lungs because of the rock dust. And it was very dark in the mines. So this picture shows how conditions were like underground. What do you notice about the picture? So first thing that will probably immediately draw your eye are the people. So we can see here we've got the white guy sitting here in the middle. And then you've got lots of people of color around him. So generally what happened during the apartheid years is there was something called a color bar which meant that skilled work was reserved for whites and people of color or black people were forced to do the unskilled labor for very little pay. Um, you can also see that this area is very, very um, cramped. There's rocks all around them so it's very easy for the rocks to fall. And you can see that there should be ventilation as well because um, when you mine, you kind of start up with rock dust and that rock dust then sits on your lungs, causes diseases such as TB, silicosis, pneumonia, can make you very, very sick. So that was what conditions were like underground. So I did tell you as well that mine owners needed a source of cheap labor and how they did this was through the systematic control of migrant laborers or workers so how did these white mine bosses or the rand lords how did they get um, black people to come and work for them so basically what happened is one of the first thing they did was that they implemented taxes so Africans had to pay a hut tax and a pull tax and it took them months of work to pay the taxes. So basically if you live in a hut, you had to pay a certain amount of your wages that you earned to the government to pay for that hut tax, which was actually just a way to control people and basically force them because many African people lived off the land. And this hut tax and pull tax basically forced them to move away from a rural society and come and work for the mine owners because they needed to pay the tax with money. Uh, the next thing they did is recruitment. The Chamber of Mines sent recruitment agents to villages to encourage people to work on the mines. Many African chiefs were paid to recruit workers. Agents were with them to ensure they only went to work on the mines. So the people were basically heavily, heavily encouraged by chiefdoms to go and work on the mines. And the chiefs were also paid to get people to work on the mines. Think of it like a... A recruitment agency that we have now where you can phone the agency and then they find jobs for you and you just go to the interview 
the next thing was that contracts. If you were a mine worker, you had to sign a contract that stated how long the job would be. Most of the time, it was at least a year. And when you were working under contract, you were not allowed to leave the mine because people were smuggling out diamonds and gold. So they were put on that compound system. I don't know if I've done that yet with you guys, but we'll get there. And this actually separated families. And if a mine worker wanted to go back home, he could be arrested, fined or sent to jail for breaking the contract. And then another way that they controlled people was through the pass laws. I'm sure you guys have all heard of the Dompas. So this is kind of the precursor to that. It didn't happen immediately in the 1800s, but it became legalized basically in the 1900s. But it starts with these pass laws where black people had to get a pass to look for work in Witwatersrand. And if he didn't find work, he either had to leave or be forced to work on the mines. So all of these ways was how the they actually forced many black people to go and work on the mines. So, as I explained earlier, this led to an increasing burden on the women in the reserves and the erosion of families. So, a lot of black laborers lived on places called reserves because as white people expanded into South Africa, they ended up taking more and more of the land and what ended up happening was that the black people were forced to live in certain sections um, that later became known as Bantustans, but at this point it's called reserves. And the way that many African nations are structured is that work is divided between male and female. Like some work is considered male work and some work is considered female work. So the men from these reserves left home to become migrant workers on the mines and like I said they had contracts which kept them there for, year, for a year at a time and they weren't allowed to go home. So what ended up happening is that women, children and the sick had to stay on the reserves and they ended up taking over work which was usually reserved for men. Um, so this created a lot of problems. Firstly, it led to family erosion. You can imagine if your mom or dad has to go away for a whole year and they can't see you, it can cause serious stress in your family. And what ended up happening is that a lot of families ended up becoming sort of broken homes because the parents weren't always together. And the next thing was soil erosion in the reserves. Um, as the white people expanded into South Africa, they basically took the most fertile land for themselves and they left the weak and dry land where you couldn't really grow much for black people. So because of soil erosion, which you learned about in geography, it, the land in the reserves were very weak and difficult to use. And because the land was weak and difficult to use, animals that were living off the land also became very weak. So because there wasn't a lot of grass for the animals to eat, they became thin and animals like cows produced less milk, which basically led to sort of starvation for the people on the reserves as well as the animals. And then now, because they can no longer live off the land like they have been doing, they are forced to go into what we call the money market. So my cow is not giving me milk. What do I do? I go to the shop, I buy milk. So people were forced to buy things from trading stores, but they needed money to do so. And this in turn creates a cycle where more people have to end up working on the mine so that they can earn money. And they're basically forced into that money society instead of living off the land. So here's an image of people that moved to the towns. You can see they've become very westernized, wearing the clothes of the white man and the European. And if you look at the people that lived on the reserve, still very much as natural as can be. So the next time I see you, we'll be talking about skilled and unskilled white workers. So I did mention that a little bit when I spoke about the color bar, but we'll go into detail in the next video. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you next time.